when Framer released the vector animations, they showcased this hover interaction which looked pretty cool. However, they didn't really tell us how exactly they created it. So in this video, we're going on a mission to find out and learn how to create icon animations like this in Framer without writing any code. My name is Nandi, this is Framer University, and let's get started. So yeah, if we look at the Framer Spring event, we can see something like this here. Look at this hover state, it looks so cool as this icon gets animated. But yeah, the problem is that they didn't really tell us how it's created, so I'm gonna show it now. First of all, we're gonna get the icon. So it's actually from the Phosphor Icon Pack. If you scroll down here, you just go to phosphoricons.com. Uh, uh, maybe I'm going to put it in the, in the description if I don't forget it. So if you search for a sign here, you're going to find the signature um, icon here. So you can just copy it as an SVG, download it, whatever you want to do. I'm going to copy it as an SVG. So once we copy the SVG here, we can jump into Framer and we can start building this thing. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to paste the icon within. So I'm just pressing Command and V. I think I didn't start my short shortcuts app, so let me just start it. So now you're gonna see my shortcuts. So I pasted the icon in, I, it's somewhere right here. Yeah, you can see it on the layer spell, it's called the join. So if I press command and X now and paste it within the main, it's now gonna be here in the center of the screen. So I can set the fill color to white, so it's actually visible. And if I zoom in, we're gonna notice a little issue. And that's the fact that this icon is not stroke based. Um, so, you know, it has these paths, but then at the end, it has a fill color and not a stroke. And that's a big problem because we can only animate strokes in Framer. So what we're going to do is we're going to just redraw it. No problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this a little bit darker like this. And then I'm going to press P on my keyboard and start drawing it. So if you haven't explored uh, the pen tool in Framer already, now this might be a great option or opportunity, not an option. Uh, so I'm going to click here, click and drag. And then I'm going to put this point here, click and drag. Then I'm going to put this point, I don't know, somewhere, somewhere here. It doesn't have to be perfect because then you can later like tweak these points. Then I'm gonna click here, just simply click. I'm not gonna drag there. Then I'm gonna click and drag here. Then I'm gonna again click here and then click and drag. And then you can see we have these nice little curves. Pretty cool. Once I have this, this path, I can change the width on the right panel to two so it's a little bit thicker. And to make it rounded, I can set the cap to round and also the join to round. So now it's much better. So now I'll just double click on the path, then press escape, but because it, it's try, it tries to like continue this thing, I'm gonna just press escape. So I can con continue like editing um, this thing that I just drew. So I'm gonna like adjust the curves with these little handles. I'm gonna try to match the original icon as close as I can. So yeah, this here, this here, this will be a little bit more to the top. And yeah, it looks pretty good. So now I'll press P again, and then I'll draw this line here as well. It's gonna be again two for the width, and it's gonna be rounded. And that's it. Now I have this uh, two paths here. I can delete the join that was our reference. Now, now it's deleted and I can group these two paths in a in a group so that we can then create an icon from it. So I'm just selecting it to right click and the group or we can also just press command G on our keyboard. So now we have this, I'm going to set the color to white and to turn this into a vector set and animate it, we have to right click the group and create a vector set. So we're going to call this a vector set, let's say um, animated icons, but you can name it whatever you want to name it. So here it's a little weird because we cannot see the icon, right? Well, it's because here, this is a, this is a different canvas. What we're seeing here, this is where we add all the icons within the vector set. And the, each of the like icons are within a little 
vector frame, like a main frame. As you can see it on the left layer panel as well, we have the vector here and then within the actual icon that we drew. So we just have to click this vector and on the right panel we can remove the fill color from it. So now we can actually see the icon within. So the size of this vector is going to be 24 by 24. So the main frame that's holding the icon is 24 by 24. And then the group within that we created will be centered with either these little icons here. So horizontal and vertical alignment, but I highly recommend learning option H and V shortcuts for the same actions. Now, once I have this, I can just make this a little bit smaller like this looks much better. Uh, to have a little breathing room around the icon. And that's basically it. I can also rename this vector, so I can name it uh, sign, and that's it. I can also rename this line to horizontal, and then this to curly. So we also know which path is which, and we can rename the group to icon. So now we have everything. If we go to preview with common and P, we see this icon is really tiny. Sorry if it's a little bit not too visible on the video, but here we have the icon. It's not animated. We don't have anything on this yet. Before we do any animation, I want to make sure that we have a color variable for, for this icon, because now if you go back to the canvas, I can actually make this a little bit larger here, maybe 120 pixels. On the right panel, I don't really have any controls for the color. So it's just white and that's it. But if I select the path within this icon, so I select both paths on the right panel, I have the color property. It has a little plus button so I can click this and create a variable out of that. So now if I come back to the canvas to our desktop breakpoint on the right panel, now we'll be able to change the color for these individual instances of this vector set frame. Pretty good. So what we know is we can animate these vectors or these strokes by selecting them, going to the top right, and adding a stroke effect to them. That's basically it. Now if I go to preview, it will like animate. I'm gonna go to the canvas though to make it a little bit larger. So you can see it just animates here, but you know the question is, how the hell am I gonna make this animate on hover? Because on the original, so if I come here to the video, when they hover over, it plays. But here in our version, it just plays when we load the website. So this is what we're gonna explore now. What we have to do is we have to remove the stroke effect from this instance. We're gonna duplicate this icon, so coming on D, and we're gonna call this sign animated, or let's just call it sign fast, because it's gonna be a fast animation. So here we're going to add an animation to these two paths. So on the top right, effect stroke, we're going to set the easing to ease out. So it starts off as fast and slows down. It's going to be time two seconds. So it's going to take two seconds to animate this in. And that's basically it. So now it's going to only animate when we show this other icon. So now here it's not animating. And here, if I select that, it's animating really nice. And I have to do another variant of this. So I'm going to duplicate this again. This is going to be sign slow. This is going to be a slower animation because what you can see here. So as I hover over, or it's actually not me who's hovering over, but as this little cursor hovers over, you can see that we have three colors, the base gray, and then we have a blue that is going really fast. And there is a white that is a little bit slower. So basically, basically that's what we're, we're, we're doing with these two variants. We're doing a fast animation and a slow. So actually, um, I was wrong because this is the slow one because it's two seconds. So instead of fast, I'm going to rename this to slow. And on the fast one, we're going to rename this slow to fast. We're going to have, instead of two seconds, we're going to have 1.5. So it's going to be a little bit faster. So now we have everything we need to create this interaction. We have to duplicate this two times. So we have in total three. The first one will be not animated. The second one will be sign slow. And the third one will be sign fast. So according to the original, the default 
which is not animated is going to be gray so i'm going to just pick a gray color for this then as you can see the fast one is the blue and the slow one is the white so slow white and fast blue pretty good so now we have this which is still not really what we have on the original. So what we have to do is to wrap them in a frame and put them right on top of each other. So I'll just wrap the first one in a stack, option, command and enter. I'm going to set the stack to fit content so it fits the content within, which is the icon. So shift A, it sets the width to fit content as well as the height. I'm going to call this icon animation. And then I'm going to put this sign slow within as well. So Let's just press command and X, paste it within the icon animation frame that we created and set this uh, sign slow to absolute position so it really appears over the you know, sign which is not animated, the previous icon. I'm going to do the same with this blue one, command and X, paste it within icon animation and set it to absolute position so it appears over the previous icons. Now if you think about the layering, on the, on the bottom we have the not animated then we have the little bit faster, uh, the the blue, and then the slow on the white on the top. So sign is going to have Z index one. It's not animated. Then we have slow. Sorry, we have fast. It is going to have Z index two, and then the slow one is Z index three. It is going to be on the very top. So now if we play this, we see this. Really cool. However, it's, it's still, it still just happens when we load this site. So how is it going to be triggered when I hover over this? Well, we have to uh, use components in order to create something like that. So this icon animation frame that we wrapped these icons within, will we have to turn into a component, right click, create component or option component K. Once we have this, we are on the component canvas where we can create different variants or hover states for these components. So what we're going to do is we're going to rename this default primary variant to default. And then I'm going to press this little thing here and select hover. So we're creating a hover state. So what we're going to do is on the default, we're not going to show the icon variants that are animated. So I'm going to select both of them. You can see on the layers panel, I can see that one of them is slow, one of them is fast. So I can just set them to visible no. So we only see the icon that is not animated. Perfect. And on the hover, I can just show them. Just set their visible to yes. And now, I think that's it. If I hover over, the animation plays. So yeah, basically that's it. We created this cool icon animation on hover with Framer without writing any code. And I think that is pretty cool. Now you can also add these little animated icons to your website, which is again, it's cool, isn't it? So yeah, that's it for this video. Make sure to drop a comment if you have any questions about this um, I don't know, whole thing. Uh, if you got stuck somewhere, you're going to also find a remix link in the description. So you can remix this project file that you can see on the screen and just dig into, I don't know, the component, the icon or whatever, and just remix it. So yeah, check out also Framer.University because I have a bunch of other components, resources, tutorials and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, that's it for this video. Make sure to like it, subscribe for more, and I'm going to see you in the next one.